It's 6.01. If people join um, while we go here, that's fine. I will uh, introduce myself first. My name is Dr. Sarah Bradley Cook, and I, like you, am new to NU. I think I shared this in my introductory video, but I was previously a professor at Mercyhurst University, which is in uh, Western Pennsylvania. And between then and now, I was working as a researcher at the University of Washington uh, in the Department of Surgery. And I'm really excited to be back in the classroom. And I will also be teaching courses uh, in biostatistics, research methods, uh, psychosocial epidemiology. So uh, many of you I will see again as a professor. I will also like see many of you again um, as your advisor. So uh, now that we have started, if you're comfortable doing so, it'd be great to see some faces besides my own. So if you wanna keep your mute on, but your video on, your choice. <laughs> but we are gonna do some introductions here momentarily, uh, in which case I will ask you to um, on um, mute your video. I get, I'm not sure that's the word, but <laughs> make it so we can see you. All right, so welcome to Public Health Foundations. Today's session is going to be pretty informal. I want to, first of all, just welcome you uh, to the program and to this course and to kind of give you some quick guidelines as the expectations for this course. You make it and also um, allow you to ask me any questions that you have about the course and about uh, the program. So without further ado, we'll get started. Uh, welcome to those of you who have maybe just logged in in the last few minutes, welcome. Uh, and we're gonna have a chance to introduce everyone here in a second. So the agenda for today is uh, to do the brief welcome, which I've already done, uh, to have you do some introductions. Uh, many of you are entering this program uh, as this is your first course. I believe there's a few of you who have had other courses at NU, but just kind of play along, and pretend it's your first course. <laughs> um, and then I'll give you a rundown on the course, uh, a little bit on the syllabus, and how to use PubMed, which is a resource for looking up articles, particularly in medicine and public health. A lot of disciplines have to kind of scatter around looking for different resources. 99% of the time when we're looking for research articles in public health and medicine, we use PubMed. So I will introduce you to that interface tonight. And I actually have a brief um, discussion slash assignment around um, you all using uh, PubMed to find some articles. I'll talk a little bit about advising in the program, and then uh, at the end, I'll allow some q and I will post the uh, these live sessions after uh, the session, usually the next day, and I will upload those to the week module for the course. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm for a in the background, um, which is awesome. I love hearing children. But yes, you do. If did everyone you could mute their mics for now, that would be awesome. When it's <laughs> Hi. Hi. How are you? <laughs> I'll see here if I. Okay, I think we're good. <laughs> uh, I purposely, um, I, I work out of a, a office here. I'm in Seattle, by the way. Um, and I have a co-working space that I work from. Mostly because I can't stay on the sound of my dog's feet, <laughs> scratching the floor the entire time I'm on the call. So I am not in my home. This is um, an office in Seattle. So that's um, a quick introduction to myself. Uh, I'll save that uh, for the end. I wanna give you all to start some introductions. So the questions I have, and you don't have to do all of these, but uh, if you could just say your name, 
uh, where you live, where you're from, if that's different, uh, like what you consider home uh, or your previous home, uh, something about your professional life. So this could be either what you're doing now, things you did in the past, or things you hope to do in the future, just something quick about you in your um, professional life. And then tell me something about the best class you've had. And I don't mean at NU, <laughs> um, I mean in general. And it doesn't have to be in academics. It could be um, something you did on the side, something for fun. But what was the best class you had? And just tell us a little bit about that. Okay, so um, I'm gonna pick on you all, if you don't mind. Um, let's see here, best way to do this. How about uh, Marin? Yeah, Marin. <laughs> oh, Marin, I, oh. That's Wait. okay, you were close. <laughs> Hi, my name is Marin. Um, I am currently living in Sacramento, California. I am from Sacramento, California. Um, Currently, I am working as a phlebotomist and um, at a, a just a lab, just a lab phlebotomist, nothing too special. Um, and my best class, um, let's see, it would have to be I, in my undergrad, I took a, a molecular biology class and I got to do um, one on one research with my professor and who is now like my mentor and I think that was my favorite class, my best class, I guess. It was, it really started, got the ball rolling on me, loving to do research, so. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Um, and I do hope that we, in this program, do have the opportunity to uh, work across faculty or with individual faculty on research that interests you. I didn't really uh, talk too much about what my research interests are. They're pretty varied, um, but I work primarily in clinical epidemiology. So I'm very interested in what type of healthcare people receive and whether it's adequate and whether there's possible better approaches within medicine <laughs> and systematically studying that. But there are so many different faculty at NU doing really interesting research and we all, are um, excited when students are excited to participate in research. So uh, in week two or week three, you can see the bios of all the different faculty in the program, and you can kind of see what their interests are and if those align with, um, with you. But you're welcome to um, <laughs> uh, think of projects that are completely your own and just receive mentorship, like you said. So thank you for sharing that. Mentorship is a really important thing and I hope we can provide that for you. All right, let's see here. Um, Patrick, can I pick on you? Yes. Hello. Hi, can we see your Hi. face? <laughs> Sorry. No worries. It's a lot of technology here. Yeah. My, I don't know if this is working. Yeah, we see you. Okay, cool. Um, Hi. My name is Patrick. Um, I currently live in Okinawa, Japan. That's where I'm stationed right now. But I'm from Dallas, Texas. That's where I call home. Um, my my professional life currently working in uh, admin field. I'm working at the medical clinic over here on, in Okinawa, trying to just uh, process and just trying to get process improvement stuff done here. Um, when it comes to classes, I don't necessarily have a, a favorite class, but I do enjoy classes that have like a hands-on approach where I can actually like get, uh, I can actually do things. And like the, I guess the SAS program is that we're going to start working on. It's uh, I was messing with that last night and I saw, and I was just interested in playing around with that. And just, I like stuff like that. That's what I'm interested in. Those are my best kind of classes. Oh, well, that's, <laughs> I, I was going to mention SAS as your hands-on opportunity within this class. Um, you will get <laughs> more than your share of SAS in this first little class. Um, no, actually, uh, the SAS module, and I'm glad you brought that up because I, I do want to cover that. It's probably something that for most of you is creating a little bit of anxiety. It sounds like Patrick's excited, which is awesome. Uh, hopefully all of you are um, uh thinking about SAS as a tool that you will be able to learn 
uh, different strategies for analyzing data. It's really not that much more complicated than Excel or other software that you've used. You just kind of have to get used to the interface and practice makes perfect. You learn how it works. And then as you get practice, you can really start to use it as a very, very powerful tool for analyzing data, answering scientific questions, using it, um, Patrick mentioned doing um, kind of quality improvement or process improvement at the healthcare setting. SAS is a program that's used widely in healthcare settings. Uh, in fact, SAS was previously the only software that you could use for doing uh, randomized clinical trials. So when you collected data from a drug study, it had to be housed in and analyzed using SAS. Um, SAS is also applicable to industry. There's a lot of businesses that use it. And so I will warn you that when you go through some of the materials, some of the examples are not gonna be health related. <laughs> Ideally, we would have you know, all the materials kind of aligned towards our interests, which are health, but the practice data sets that they provide are about hurricanes, which is public health related, <laughs> sort of, um, and also um, some national park data. But the point of that is you can really use it for anything. So thank you for your excitement about Patrick, or about Patrick, about SAS, Patrick. I hope that that rubs off on everyone else. Um, and one thing I wanted to, uh, well, I'll talk about the schedule with SAS. So uh, let's see, next introduction. Who looks ready to go? How, how about Jen Freeman? Hello. Hi, Jen. Uh, I'm Jennifer or Jen. Yeah, that's that's perfectly fine. Um, and I live in uh, Sanger, California, and I'm from the Central Valley area, Tulare, Visalia area. And um, I am a veteran, Navy veteran, and I currently work at the uh, Fresno VA Hospital. I actually transitioned from the eye clinic. I was at the eye clinic for about five years, and then I uh, got an admin position. So I'm doing that now, and I love it so much more because <laughs> I don't have to really. Um, it's it's a it's for me. I like being behind the scenes and you know knowing how the hospital works and everything, and. Um, my best class would be um, my a photography class that I, I took um, before the recession kind of tanked in 2010. I was going to do be uh, um, get my associates in photography and then build a career off of that. But then the economy just kind of took a nosedive. <laughs> um, but anyway, with the class, I was, you know, um, I, we took photos with film. We learned how to develop with film. And it was just... Um, it really gave me an opportunity to express myself. So I think that was my favorite class. That's awesome. Have you been able to explore that further at all? Like um, weddings or anything? Uh, yeah, but it just, I am, um, I recently got my bachelor's um, from Penn state. So I really, and I'm working full time and I have two kids in the background running around. So it's just kind of, they haven't really had time to nurture that so much. Okay. Awesome. Well, welcome to the program, and we're really excited to have you. Thank you. Um, Happy to be here. Let's see. Uh, Antonio? You're going to have to unmute. Okay, yeah. Um, awesome. I, uh, my name is uh, Antonio Belight. I, um, I live in uh, Murrieta, California. Um, I'm originally from Jamaica. Uh, that's where uh, I grew up. I've been living in the US for about 10 years now. Uh, I'm in the, the United States Navy, um, active duty currently. I work, in, um, I work as a corpsman, medical field. Um, I see that um, the last guy that spoke, I forgot his name. He looks like he's green side. I'm green side too. Patrick. Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, best class was um, way back when I first went to college. I went to, I was going to go for accounting for a bachelor's degree. And um, I'm no longer doing accounting, obviously. <laughs> but uh, 
that was one of my best classes, uh, financial accounting. It was, uh, I don't know, I really liked it back then and uh, did really well at it. But yeah, that was one of the best classes I've had. Teacher was great. That's great. Wow. Yeah. I might have some questions for you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Too um, long. That's a good skill to have. That's a good personal skill to have. Even if you don't end up making a career out of it, we could all probably use a little extra training in that area. Uh, well, welcome. And um, so we've got two, at least two active service members, and that's not unusual um, as a percentage of our students. We often have a lot of either former or active or partially active um, uh, military. So that's great. Uh, let's see, who have I not? Um, Leland? Am I getting that right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Abdul Aline, uh, originally from Togo, West Africa. Uh, I'm active duty as well, stationed here in Norfolk, uh, Virginia. Uh, I'm actually stationed on the ship. Uh, we are in port right now. We'll be leaving soon. Uh, best class, I would say, was uh, when I was working on my bachelor in uh, public health, and that was uh, perspective on nutrition. Uh, why do we overeat? Uh, that was one of my best class. Uh, actually learn how much our brain like get like push us into eating and also how certain uh, <clears throat> food affects uh, a part of our brain pushing us into greasy, salty, fat food, and all of that. And beside that, uh, English is my second language. Uh, it's a little bit uh, difficult to do the translation from my native language or my uh, actual first language to uh, English, but I try to double, get the words uh, together and make people understand it if possible. That's well, all me. oh, sorry. That's all about me. Okay. Well, everyone in this class is going to be working a little bit on their writing, um, and I hope all of you will be open to receiving some feedback on your writing. One of the goals of this particular course is to get you comfortable writing again. I imagine for some of you, it's been a while. <laughs> I know in the military world, there's a lot of shorthand abbreviations and so on, and we're gonna to try to get into good habits of using the kind of vocabulary and just the kind of tone of scientific writing that we use in public health. But we also have writing in public health, which is for different audiences that are you know, for education purposes and for the community. And so just having communication skills in general are something that I hope all of us can work on, um, especially as we come out of our Zoom world and are back out in the community. All right, um, and oh, I had a question for you. So you did an undergrad program in um, public health? Good. Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay, great. Well, I hope this doesn't duplicate it. <laughs> it shouldn't. <laughs> okay. um, graduate, you know, graduate expectations are a little bit different. Um, the independence, your ability to pursue topics that actually interest you as opposed to going through a curriculum. Uh, we do have set courses, of course, but you do have the, you know, more freedom as a master's student to kind of direct your, your interests um, and to find faculty who are aligned with your interests. I have a special place in my heart for undergrad public health students because I was um, one of the faculty members who started the public health program, the undergraduate public health program at Mercyhurst, and I really enjoyed teaching undergrads public health. It was never really, it's not that common to have undergraduate public health. Now it is, but it wasn't <laughs> 10 years ago. Um, so did you study that in the States or elsewhere? Uh, it was here in the States. Uh, I'm actually a preventive medicine technician. That's what pushed me into the field. So. Oh, okay. Awesome. So it sounds like a lot of you are already have some hands in health care or medical stuff in general, which is to be expected. But some of you um, may also have no background in public health, and that's not uncommon. 
um, we often get a lot of students who come from social science uh, backgrounds and their perspective is more and more valuable. It's always been valuable, don't get me wrong, but as we address social justice issues and um, environmental justice issues and, and any number of contextual factors, sociologists, anthropologists, they've been talking about this stuff for a long time, as have public health, but there's a nuance and a subtlety to the, those disciplines and their perspectives that are really important. And so um, if you don't have a public health background, that's fine. Uh, our goal is to kind of be multidisciplinary, um, but it's kind of neat that uh, you already have that experience. I'll be interested to know how your experience compares. <laughs> All right, let's see who else we have here. I'm still navigating Zoom myself here. Um, uh, I'm gonna mess this up. Monet Ford? Can you hear me? Yes. Awesome. Okay, yeah, it's Monet. Awesome. Um, uh, I'm, I, currently I live in Santa Maria, California. I'm active duty stationed at Vandenberg Space Force Base now. Um, I'm from Washington State. Um, I lived in Issaquah for most of my life. Um, yeah, currently professionally, my job has nothing to do with medical. Um, I'm more of the personnel side for military. Um, but my undergraduate is public health and I'm looking to cross train to be a public health officer within the next two years. Oh, that's um, awesome. sorry. Then my best class, um, I went to the University of Alabama. And so I took a health disparities class. And I would say that's probably my favorite class I've ever taken. Um, just a lot of great class discussion. Um, so it was just a great class overall. Monet, how recently was that, may I ask, that you did the undergrad at Alabama? Say that again? How recently were you in the undergrad program at, at Alabama? Um, I graduated December of 2019. Oh, okay. Um, mm -hmm. The reason I asked, sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but um, did you participate on the Scholar Bowl team for Alabama? No, I didn't. Oh, I did okay. ROTC, so that took up a lot of my time. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, yeah. The only reason I ask is that um, we would take our students every year to the Public Health Scholar Bowl, and Alabama came one year, and they did, they won. <laughs> 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 they did really, really well. So I was going to, I'll congratulate you after the fact that <laughs> Alabama <laughs> kicked butt. <laughs> um, Awesome. Well, we have, that's interesting. Okay, so that's two. Um, but again, if, if, no matter what your background, it used to be that an MPH program, um, you know, like I said, undergrad public health wasn't as common as it is today. And so um, that's just a bonus. Um, so you already have a head start. Okay, um, who am I missing? Let's see if I navigate this. Anna Marie? Oh. Hi everyone. Hello. Um, my name is Anna Marie. I'm, excuse my voice, I'm just still waking up. Um, I'm currently here stationed in Manama, Bahrain, is in Middle East. Um, I am born and raised in the Philippines, but I do live in San Diego, California. Um, I am a mechanic. Machine is made in the Navy, which is like in the engineering side. Uh, but I did took out uh, nursing uh, back in 2008 in the, in the Philippines. Um, I don't really have uh, any best class. I try to do my best on each class that I take. <laughs> well, that's a great attitude. <laughs> um, well, and in this class, one of my goals for all the students is to kind of get in good habits for um, going forward in the program. For some of you, this may be your first time doing an online class. And uh, so I will talk today a little bit about the structure so that you guys kind of get used to it. Now I will mention that courses at NU can vary from course to course, depending on the instructor uh, in terms of the format. But uh, this course, I, well, thank you for the introduction, but that reminded me <laughs> as far as the courses, how they're, they're different here um, in terms of the setup. But this course, I um, hope that you will 
meet certain deadlines with assignments, but I also appreciate that you guys are all over the world and all in different time zones and all those things as we've seen so far. And so uh, those deadlines are not strict as we're gonna talk about, but if I'm gonna be able to provide feedback to you on your writing uh, in a timely way, and so you can improve your writing and things like that, or improve the quality of your work, um, meeting the deadlines will be important for that. But for this course, as long as really everything's turned in by the end, that's fine. However, like I said, if you want feedback or to allow me to give you feedback, things need to be turned in uh, on time. And then also for the discussions, it's really hard to have a discussion all at the end of the course. <laughs> so um, if, if, if nothing else during a certain week, if you get behind on things, I would hope that you would participate in the discussions uh, just that helps keep everybody on schedule. Um, and I'll talk more about this now, but I, I wanted to mention that. Okay, uh, let's see, who have I missed? And a few students have emailed me that they are not able to attend tonight. And that is absolutely fine. Um, I understand, especially considering we are all so scattered around. I think there's 17, yeah, there's 17 students enrolled in this course. So we're doing all right. <laughs> Hopefully we'll get more. Uh, did I miss anyone? I'm clicking through here. If I did, unmute and shout. Okay. All right. So I will um, thank you all for um, taking the time to say something about yourself. And hopefully there'll be more opportunities to get to know each other, especially in terms of your interests um, as you choose different topics for your assignments and uh, write about them. Hopefully that will give you a sense of what other students are interested in. It'll also give me a sense of what you're interested in and that maybe I can provide some guidance as far as opportunities uh, to pursue those things. You can also pick topics that you just want to <laughs> do the assignment, but um, I also encourage you to um, explore topics that interest you. Okay, so in terms of the structure of this course, I do post uh, modules on Sundays, all the content. Um, this, this month or this class, everything's up there now. So you are welcome to self-paced throughout um, the course. I don't, I haven't closed off any items on the course. I especially do that during the summer because it's summer. <laughs> and I realize that people may have, um, you know, travel and other things built into this month. And so um, I do have the entire course laid out. So you don't have to wait for anything to post. Normally I kind of release it on a weekly basis. But that said, I do suggest that you think about the course as being a week by week process and try to finish the different intermediate goals. Uh, and you'll notice within Blackboard at the end of each week, I have a checklist of those things that you should have accomplished or, or started. And that's really to kind of keep you on a good habits and, and make your life easier so that you don't have a lot to do at the end. Um, okay, but like I said, self-pace within a module as much as you want. Um, and um, last, I just taught this course last month and uh, I found that almost everyone turned their stuff in on time and that was really helpful so I could provide feedback. So hopefully by laying everything out ahead of time, I didn't kill that <laughs> and you don't all just rush right to the end. Okay, so in terms of the assignments, there are four writing assignments. That doesn't mean there are four papers. There are just four writing assignments, written assignments. The first one is um, perhaps the most um, structured in terms of writing an ar a formal argument. And it's, it's kind of building on uh, the first lecture, which I hope you'll have a chance to have already watched or will watch this week about writing effectively to um, present an argument with an introduction a body and a conclusion. And so your best writing sample will be the first writing assignment. The next three assignments that you go through are also written assignments, but I also expect you to use the same uh, approach as far as 
you trying to use persuasive writing and also to cite any um, sources that you use for those written assignments. Uh, so after the first written assignment, which is due Monday, uh, next Monday, uh, I can provide you some quick feedback on your first pass writing, which can hopefully help you with future assignments. Uh, the weekly discussions are due at midnight on uh, Sunday, just to be clear, 11.59 p.m. Pacific time. <laughs> you guys are all like in different time zones, but um, 11.59 Pacific time is when ideally all discussion posts will be posted. That way students can see them and respond to them. Okay, now we're on to the SAS programming. Okay, so SAS, let me just um, quickly mention, SAS is one of many possible statistical software programs out there. It happens to be one of the most powerful ones. Uh, and it's also one of the ones that is used the most widely in medicine and public health. That's changing a little bit. You may have heard of other stats programs uh, or database programs uh, such as SPSS. Often people who are in the social sciences use SPSS. Stata is another one. R, just the letter R, <laughs> is probably the biggest competitor to SAS. And one of the things that people like about R is that it is entirely free. Free is not always better. <laughs> uh, it's just, that's one reason why it has become very, very popular. Uh, the version of SAS that you're going to use is also free. Um, there are more robust versions of it that are you have a license for, but the basic um, for what you need to do in this course and in this program, you only need the free version. But it does set you up to be able to use the more um, the full version. But uh, it's, there's really it has the same capabilities in terms of statistical analysis. The only limitations it has is, is the file size. I ran into that the other day. I tried to upload a two gig file and it said no, apparently one gig is the limit, but <laughs> we generally don't use huge data sets bigger than a gig. So um, although in this era of big data, maybe that's not even the big data, but the data sets you'll have to use are small, I promise. Okay, so uh, that one is due by week four and uh, I encourage you, I strongly encourage you to get started on that early. And in fact, I would like you to make it a goal to follow the steps that I provided on week one, where you create a user profile. Maybe some of you have already done that. Uh, and what I really wanna be able to accomplish by the end of this week is having all of you set up, up and running. You, you know how to open the program you know how to open the tutorials. If by the end of the week you've tried and you simply can't get it to work, please email me and I'll be more than happy to walk you through it. You can also send, um, when you send me that email, if you could send a, a screenshot or use the snipping tool to create a little picture of where it is that you're having trouble, I can better able to troubleshoot uh, or think about what the problem might be in advance. But if you don't do that, that's fine too. I'll be happy to um, help with that. So I'm here to guide you through that SAS tutorial as far as getting you moving. So don't feel like you're all on your own after today. Um, and once you get in the flow, um, you'll all be fine. Okay. Um, and then the final deliverable for this class is a competency plan. This is a very brief document, which is you picking the public health competencies that you want to work on during your master's program, okay? And there are some that are general and there are some that are specific to concentrations. And in that document, you will simply select the ones that you wanna work on and kind of present a hypothetical scenario for what you would do for your uh, final capstone or research uh, project. That's a long ways away. This is just an exercise to get you familiar with what the competencies are. 
you do not have to pick a final project this week <laughs> or this month or even that soon. But I just want, it's mostly just to get you familiar with the document because ultimately when you do do your, your final exit projects, uh, you will have to kind of sign off on a similar document. Okay, so that's not a real, that's not a real big assignment, but I just want to put it in front of you. Okay. All right, so this, this next slide is not um, exactly, well, it's in your syllabus, but it looks a little different. There's different colors um, on this page, but this just shows you the due dates for things. So here we are Wednesday. Um, you can ignore Monday because it's a holiday. Hopefully you won't, none of you are doing anything <laughs> for this course. Although I think somebody what somebody did, which is awesome, but, um, but, uh, so you can push this day um, forward, but I hope that you'll watch the first lecture, the video intro, et cetera, and then get started on using SAS, creating a SAS profile. And you'll notice that throughout this document, I'm sorry, this page, I have due dates. Again, um, excuse me one moment, I'm gonna pause my mic. There's Ghostbusters suction happening behind me here, and I'm just gonna politely ask him to <laughs> mute himself here. I'll just Oh, okay. <laughs> the beauty of being in a co-working space is that you don't have total control over the sounds around you, so I apologize for that. Hopefully you can hear me again. Okay, so um what I presented here is in your syllabus and it has the due dates uh, for your different assignments. These are again, mostly suggestions to keep you on track for um, completing the course on time. Okay, so you'll notice that the writing assignments are all due on um, Mondays at midnight. And then the suggestion is to start in on your next writing assignment. On Wednesdays, we'll have our Zoom sessions. Again, if you miss one, that's fine. Um, I just wanna provide opportunities to um, do some extra learning. I will record the sessions and they will be posted the next day. But most importantly, I wanna direct your attention to, oops, um, making sure that you stay on pace for doing your SAS tutorials. So my suggestion here is to complete SAS tutorial one and two this Thursday or tomorrow, uh, lesson three by Friday. I don't recommend trying to race through the SAS tutorials. <laughs> it's a lot of content. Uh, I think it estimates it as taking 20 hours. I don't think it really takes 20 hours. It really depends on how much you engage with it and what level of challenges you ask um, for your quizzes and things like that. But do allow enough time to complete it. Uh, and so I would suggest doing one or two SAS tutorials at a time, because sometimes when you get the program up and running and you have the tutorial up and running, it's sometimes e easier to keep your momentum than putting it down again. So try to knock off one or two each time. And before you know it, you'll have your SAS certification done. All right, easier. <laughs> I, I went, I actually went through the whole SAS tutorial along with the students uh, last semester. I've been using SAS for close to 20 years. It hasn't changed that much. Uh, and it's just a matter of learning some of the logic and you can um, get really advanced with it. You can also learn to do some pretty cool stuff in your first few weeks, so. I'm uh, happy to answer questions about SAS. All right, so back to the PowerPoint. So some things I like about SAS, um, it's the SAS on demand program is free. Can't argue with that. It's pretty amazing that we have the ability to use a statistical program with that much power just through a web interface. Uh, so I think that's great. Uh, it's used by both academics, researchers, and in industry. I think that's a huge advantage. You've got users 
all over the world using SAS. Um, there are SAS trainings, uh, training opportunities. Um, there are courses uh, which require SAS for continuing education in analysis. And so SAS is a good, a good one to learn. As I mentioned, there is some competition with other software and you'll find that they are they all pretty much work the same. SAS is particularly good at um, manipulating data in terms of transforming it and making it useful or managing very large data sets. So that's one reason why it has an advantage over others. Uh, it also has the most up-to-date statistical procedures. So I am not a statistical um, or mathematical statistician. I am an applied statistician. So I let the math people figure out the, <laughs> the mechanics. But every once in a while, a new methodologies emerge and SAS is always a leader as far as implementing anything that's new as far as approaches in, in analysis. And you'll learn a lot about, um, well, you'll learn how to do basic statistics in our biostatistics class, hopefully, um, all of you have had statistics in the past of some kind, um, but it's um, there is no real uh, assumption that you'll have retained that information when you take the biostats course, and we will kind of start from the beginning uh, as far as that goes. So uh, it also has really good tools for data visualization and graphics. Um, so it's a nice little tool once you get once you get up and running with it. Okay. So I promised to show you uh, PubMed because PubMed is the main archive of research articles that have been peer reviewed for public health. Whenever I go to start a new research project, um, hopefully I've already been reading the literature, but I will go in and do a literature review and see what has been written on the topic that I'm interested in. Usually that's a fairly specific search. So for example, um, the most recent study that I was working on was looking at surgery during pregnancy. And the question, the research question was, is it safe to operate during any trimester of pregnancy? There isn't, this is not something that you can randomize women to. Um, this is for women who present with either appendicitis or acute cholecystitis. And uh, the common wisdom in surgery is that it's okay to operate, especially with appendicitis, it's an emergency procedure. Uh, but there had never really been any studies that looked at the question of, well, is it really safe? Um, and so we were doing a couple of papers around that. So I would approach before going into doing this project, <laughs> and by the way, I was working with surgeons, so it wasn't like a randomly. Um, answering this question. Um, but uh, the, the point is, is that I have this kind of specific topic in mind and I wanted to make sure that I researched to see what else had already been written on this topic. And whenever you go into a research project, you should always, um, or if you're interested in a topic, to go through the literature and see what's out there uh, and I'm going to give you a couple of tips for kind of making that process a little smoother and a little simpler. Uh, it's used widely by researchers across the health sciences. Uh, so medicine uses it, public health uses it, healthcare administration uses it. Um, it's really where all peer reviewed articles <laughs> go to live. That's where they're born. <laughs> they often appear in, in uh, online before they go to print. Um, and then it's also where they archive. Okay, so let me switch modes here. Can I share? Okay. I need to open my screen, sorry. Okay. Sorry, folks. Joy of live. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so I would just start at Google <laughs> and type in PubMed. You can also type in its URL. So PubMed is the public access version of Medline, which is a subscription-based um, service to the Library of Medicine. They're both basically the same thing. Um, but the PubMed has become kind of the default for looking for academic journals. So if you go to PubMed, you'll have this little search box. Um, well, actually, before I do this, quick show of hands or if you've used PubMed before, you can just shout out, unmute, and say, yeah. Yeah, I used it. OK. <laughs> I see a thumbs up. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, even if you've never used it or if you have used it, I'm going to show you a couple of, of tips and tricks. Okay. So, um, uh, okay. Well, how about somebody presents a topic of interest? Just make something up. Um, drug addiction. Okay. Drug addiction. Um, I will use that actual terminology. And anything specific about it? Prevalence of drug addiction? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to guide it, I just. What uh, about drug addiction in the homeless? Oh, awesome. Okay, that's more specific, thank you. Okay, uh, so what I got when I did that search is a couple things to think about with the organization of PubMed. The first thing is the most recent articles are the ones that appear at the top. They aren't necessarily the most relevant. So basically anywhere homeless and drug addiction appeared in the, in the title or in the abstract, the paper will come up. So taking the first article that appears isn't your best bet. This sounds like a very interesting paper, Cardiovascular Disease and Homelessness, and maybe it discusses drug addiction among a homeless population, but that's not really zoomed in on the topic of interest. I might be, you might be curious about that one, like, oh, I didn't know that was a thing, or I didn't know that that was a specific problem among that population, and maybe drug addiction has something to do with it. Um, but um, as I scroll through this, sorry, I keep moving myself as opposed to the. Okay. Um, okay, so here's a qualitative analysis of the life stories of homeless people. Uh, I'm just seeing. Okay, and so we've got different types of study designs here. This is a longitudinal study of housing status and crime. It doesn't really say drug addiction. Um, this is a, uh, an encounter with homelessness and drug addiction. This is like a case study by a physician. Alcoholism, drug abuse, and the homeless. There we go. That sounds like it's on target with what we're um, interested in. So what I would do is select an article that is as close to what it is that you're actually interested in, that you know basically is exactly what you were interested in. Go to that paper. And when you go to that paper, then you can read its bibliography and see what other papers it cited. Because if it's a current paper and it's a summary article of kind of the state of the science on homelessness and substance use disorders, uh, which would be the term we use now, it's ever changing, but substance use disorders, um, you would, uh, hopefully they will have done a lot of the legwork for you and done a fairly good job of reviewing the current literature. So that's my approach. Rather than relying solely on PubMed to come up with the articles and use its algorithm, kind of use the, the way science works is that people build off each other's work 
And so if you start with a paper that's super close to what you're interested in, that can direct you to other papers. That's what my approach is, and I recommend you doing the same. Now, here's another, um, let's see what else. Um, so there's some country specific ones. Here's some things about drug treatment. Okay, so I would normally pick three or four articles that interest you, make sure they're um, kind of in the area and then just read the bibliographies and go from there. However, <laughs> another trick is you don't always have direct access to every article, okay? If an article received any federal funding at all, it has to be made freely available in PubMed. So you'll see here, this one says free PMC article. If it says that, I know that I can get a PDF version of the entire article just through this PubMed interface. So if I clicked on um, this one, I should be able to um, go to the abstract and click on this little PMC full text. And I will get the actual article, the whole thing, PDF. I can print it. Don't necessarily suggest doing that always every time you get an article, but this is the entire article. If I could show you that, that'd be awesome. Okay. Okay, so actually it defaults to just showing me the HTML version. This is the entire article. But if I want the PDF, it should be here somewhere. PDF, here we go. Okay, so here's the actual original article as it would appear in the journal. Okay, so that would be, um, that's nice and simple. It's already there and ready for you. Now, if it isn't free or if you can't figure out how to get it for free, don't pay for an article. <laughs> <laughs> don't ever pay for an article. There's a couple of things you can do. One is if you enter through the national, you're logged in and you go through the library system at NU, it will authenticate you and it may provide you access to additional articles. The other thing you can do is you can use the interlibrary loan at NU and you can give them the title of an article, the, the, it'll ask you the information such as the publication year, month, date, et cetera. You can enter that in and they will email you a copy of the PDF um, because we have agreements with different uh, libraries and different universities to share articles across. Uh, I don't recommend doing that for assignments because you know, you can probably find an article that works just fine. But if you're thinking about doing a literature review for your own work, or you want to do a truly systematic review, uh, that's another approach to get access. So you really should be able to get access to almost anything that you're interested in, in reading. Okay, so those are a couple of tips in um, PubMed. My Certainly could go on and on about all the ways in which to do a search in PubMed. I will stop there. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to share screen again. Okay, so that brings us to five minutes <laughs> for me to quickly describe uh, advising and any questions you might have. So the way it works at National is we as faculty each teach this course, this foundations course, a couple times a year. And whoever enrolls, lucky you, <laughs> um, you are initially assigned to me as your academic advisor. So I am actually your academic advisor. Uh, uh, and I can help you navigate really any issue that you have at NU as far as choosing courses, thinking about um, internships, any kinds of questions that are academic or future career related, I'm very happy to work with you. Um, and so I will set up office hours, um, Monday, Tuesdays, Thursdays, 10 to four Pacific, 
but what I do is I keep those time slots open always for meetings, et cetera, for students. I can also meet outside those times. And especially for those of you who are in different time zones, those times that might be during the middle of the night. So um, I appreciate that. So we can, we can work something out. And that's both in this course, I can set up office hours and then also for more NU MPH program related questions, you can also set up meetings with me. So don't be shy about doing that. You can always cancel a meeting, but if you preventatively need <laughs> advising, set one up and I will be happy to uh, meet with you. I do allow for a 24 hour response from me to get back with you to set up like a Zoom meeting or just check my calendar, to make sure that it's gonna work. So that's all I ask as far as advising. And now we have time for your questions. I have a question. Awesome. Is there um, a specific um, writing software that we're supposed to have for this class? Are we, do we need to have like Microsoft Word or can we use Pages or something else? Um, good question. Thank you for asking that. Um, so for the writing assignments, you can actually enter the, um, the assignment right into the Blackboard interface. Um, I will also take Word, Microsoft Word attachments. You can upload those for each of the assignments, but I don't, I don't care what format you use. And I don't think that others do either. <laughs> if, if they do, um, they will make that clear, but as long as it's something, you know, an RTF file or, um, it should be something that has some format thing to it, <laughs> but, um, but you know, you don't, if you don't have access to Microsoft Word, don't worry about it, but that's, that's normally what people would use is Microsoft Word. But if you use any of the comp, the other ones out there, which I'm not even that familiar with, but I'm sure it would be fine. Thank you. Yeah. I've seen all kinds of things. <laughs> as long as I can read them, I got it. Um, other questions? I have, I have a comment. Yes. Um, with the student version of Microsoft Office is free with your national university um, email. There you go. I didn't know that. Thank you so much for telling me. I will better answer, much better answer than what I just gave. <laughs> that, that reminds me, yeah, whenever I go, uh, there are some uh, software resources. So I always check out the IT site to see what's available to students, but thank you. Um, is it obvious how to go about getting that? I'm sorry, I'm not even sure who spoke. Yeah. Um... You just go on there, it says like for student, for professional, for business, all that just do the student. There we go. Awesome, thank you, Ed. You'll need your student ID number uh, to get it. So just make sure you know that. Thank you so much. Wow. Yeah, we're trying to keep it, everything we're trying to keep <laughs> as cheap as possible. <laughs> Even the SAS, you know. Um, all right, other questions? Well, as you can do you, tell. Do you teach any other classes? I do. I teach um, now. Uh, so at NU, it works a little bit differently than some universities where there are faculty members who are considered the lead on certain courses and they may have teaching assistant to teach some sections of courses, especially for the ones that are super high volume courses. Um, but most of our courses are smaller. And so the, the faculty do teach the courses that are leading. So to answer your question, I teach research methods, psychosocial epidemiology. Thank you. Um, and if you look through week two or week three, um, I think it's week three, um, you'll see a PowerPoint that has all the other faculty listed in it. And I do believe it mentions which courses they teach. I could be wrong about that, but that'll give you an idea of who's all in the program. Uh, last question. Yes. Um, 
on the course website, the Corps, well, not the course, the program page on the national accreditation is up at the end of this month. What do we know about its renewal? We will know that, okay, so the question was for CEEP accreditation, um, when will we know the answer to the reaccreditation visit that happened recently? So the answer is mid-June to July. We will know the answer to that. I do. I came into NU in the last three or four months, and one of my goals is to <laughs> help the university um, with that process. Uh, so I will, if I hear anything before that, I will certainly let you know during this course. But there should be an announcement um, uh, in June or July about that. Uh, regardless of that, we do follow the C criteria, and um, so the curriculum is um, based on the C guidelines. But yes, we will find out about the reaccreditation um, in July. Thanks for asking that. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, well, if nothing comes to mind right now, feel free to always shoot me an email. That's the best, my preferred method of contact. Um, and do, you know, if you um, feel like you're lost, don't wait until week three, <laughs> especially for the SAS tutorial. I would much prefer to um, have you ask questions, even if they seem silly, just ask them right away so we can get you all set up. Uh, and I will do a check-in next week, Wednesday, during the live session, make sure that um, everyone is up to speed um, by then, hopefully. Uh, and hopefully you can also next Wednesday share some of your experiences uh, of using the SAS tutorial. I will, uh, just quickly on the SAS tutorial, uh, don't get too hung up on any one little small piece. What I would suggest is if something is confusing to you, write it down and kind of compile a list of questions, but just continue to plow forward. Don't completely shut down and <laughs> give up. Plow on, try to get through that unit or that section because each section in the tutorial, it never digs super duper deep into it. And it's not necessarily cumulative where each thing you have to get it completely down before you get to the next stop. So don't let it be a roadblock if there's a minor point that you don't understand. Uh, but if you do hit a roadblock, also you can ask me questions. But another strategy too with the SAS tutorials is some of the questions that they ask in the little quizzes at the end are a little challenging, maybe a little more challenging than they need to be. But I think they're there for is to help guide you to make sure that you really understand what you're looking at. So it is okay to click on the answer <laughs> and then go back and figure out, oh, okay, there I see, the, um, I see what it's saying. That's where it got that answer from. Don't forget the whole point of the um, tutorial is to train you how to use the software. It's not to test you on your SAS knowledge. And so if you view it that way, when you go through the quizzes, it makes it a little less intimidating. You're like, okay, I get it. And if you're able then to answer the question after you've seen the answer, but can replicate it using the software, that's just as good as if you had figured it out by yourself, honestly. Okay. All righty. Well, thanks for taking time out of your very busy schedules. And especially for those of you who came, came from halfway around the world, thank you for making us a priority. Um, and we'll see each other hopefully next Wednesday night. So thank you all. Thank you. Have a good night.